I'm David Menken, and I play Virgil and Gordon Tracy. I'm Rasmus Hardika, and I play Scott Tracy and Alan Tracy. <laughs> so the fact that both of you play two characters, does that ever get strange when you're recording conversations between the uh, characters? I don't know who I am anymore, genuinely. No. Uh, I, call, I call it my Gollum moments, uh, you know, from Lord of the Rings, where he's having the argument with himself. Uh, and that's sight. You spoiled that one for me. Thanks. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, maybe see it since we work for them. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, how, how do you feel about? It? How do you feel about voicing two characters at once, right? I love it. Yes, I do love it. I get to talk to myself. Um, I think it adds more to the action, David. I think it adds more to the action. You can have a, You can ramp it up instead of doing one and then doing the other. You can really get into it. Um, we have an amazing voice director. His yes, name is Dave Peacock. He's I, one of the best. If not, sound. Yeah. He's the best. He's yeah, the best. And uh, he gets stuff out of us that uh, that we didn't necessarily know was possible. And and that's the thing about coming to one of these um uh, appearances and, and conventions and stuff. Um, he's like the silent hero yeah. in our group. He's the one that herds the cats because we are. That's what it's like working with, working with actors, I guess. But he's a, he's a, he's actually a genius and he deserves a lot of credit um, because he, he brings stuff out of us that you wouldn't necessarily normally think of. Um, and he's quite free as well, so he gets us because we, yeah. we know our characters now. We, we do. Yeah, well, we do. So. That's that's the thing. It's it's uh, you know we are. We are way ahead. It takes so long for an episode to actually get finished because it starts with us recording, then it goes to previs, um, where, uh, and of course, then it's the building of the sets, the building of the miniatures, uh, marriage of the CGI. It's an 18 finishing. month per episode. Yeah, it's process. insane. So by the time we get to see it, we've forgotten what we did anyway. So there's a, the, in the original series, there, there's a, a, an element of interchangeability between certainly the four brothers outside of John. Um, to what extent, uh, and how very quickly in this did you feel you were actually playing with very distinct personalities? And is it helped by the fact that because each of you have taken on two brothers in your own mind, you've had to make a clear divide. really clearly distinct it's in, a, in terms of yeah. who they are, what they're what their, their personality traits. That's a really good point, and I think that's uh, that's absolutely spot on. Um, whilst we had that clear divide instantly, it is definitely something that you discover as you go. And I remember our head writer, uh, Rob Hogan, he, uh, he, he said that it, in, in his experience in, in these very long um, uh, productions, it takes about 12 or 13 episodes to really find, um, especially on the ensemble cast, to really hone um, in on the characters. And that's that's exactly what it was like, I think. And that's the thing, you, you get to, uh, you, you find that at at first in the script you actually do certain contractions for certain characters after a while and then what you find is that is that after a, a while the script comes to you with those contractions in there so they're they're you, listening you to you something they yeah. are yeah and they're they're helping you because they start to hear your voice when when they're writing it and and that's kind of special and it's also great when um, we have these guys in New Zealand who are putting everything together and they want us to change the line slightly and they'll impersonate us <laughs> Which is always, yeah, always fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, were you guys familiar at all with the original series when you? Uh I was not really because uh, being American, um, uh, when I was in, I was in the UK um, in the early '90s, and then uh, from 2000 onwards, and the resurgence happened in the mid '90s. So I was actually in the States at the time, and I came back. But I realized that after uh, after starting working on it. Um, I was familiar with so much of it. Uh, Cat's phrases, uh, the rockets, the you know, and the launch, uh, everything. So um, as soon as as soon as I started getting into it, I realized, oh wow, I actually am very familiar with it because it is so much a part of uh, of uh, British culture. And now, what culture? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was I, I from from uh, childhood. Yeah, in, in the resurgence in the in the in the nineties. Um, loved it, loved it, and I when I first heard that 
that this was happening, you know, and I had to be had to be more. I mean, it was just and Thomas Sangster who plays um, who plays John Tracy. He was also a, a huge fan and had the costume. And, yeah, there's pictures, just pictures yeah. of him as a kid, you know, with the full on Tracy. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So yeah, we, like, yeah. It, we're big fans. Yeah. Yeah. Big I am now. Yeah, for sure. Can I throw something at you here, which is that um, if we take Virgil and Scott as kind of fundamentally heroic figures, they kind of pilot the two sort of chunkiest machines in terms of demolition and explosives and action. Yeah. Alan is kind of had a history of being a bit of a womanizer. Mm. Gordon was a bit adrift, I felt, in the original series. I feel like Gordon, growing up, Gordon Tracy was the one that sort of had the worst hair of all the puppets, kind of was in a submarine. So in terms of, how do you, can you articulate what what Gordon is and whether you were kind of aware that of, of, there was sort of, whether there was like a picking order in the Tracy brothers in terms of who was cool and who was not. Okay, well, yeah. okay, there's, there's um, and please correct me if you think I'm wrong here, but um, the fact is that, uh, that both Alan and Gordon, even though they are the youngest and the ones that sort of um, are the jokers of the pack, um, they are also the ones who end up going on very solitary, longer missions. So, and dangerous missions. Yes, Gordon is underwater uh, one time, and of course, Alan uh, very, very quickly establishes himself as he is he is the best pilot, uh, hands down. Yeah. And um, but what we have is that um, there are the two older guys, of course, they, they feel like they have a lot of responsibility. The two younger ones, um, they have been, in a, in a sense, spared uh, from that. And they get, they get a chance to bring a bit of levity to it. Um, Gordon um, is a little bit in love with Lady Penelope. I don't yeah. know if you, that's come across to you. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Alan's just in love with himself. And K.O. And K.O. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's, it's true. I mean, you've got Scott who's definitely got he, what he feels. He's got the weight of the world on his shoulders. Um, Virgil is so relaxed normally. But he's also the emotional caretaker of the group. Absolutely. And uh, then Gordon... Um, and Alan are, are these, these. Alan is the, is the youngest, and he's got the most to learn. He he is the best pilot technically, but he's just so eager to, to get up there that, that sometimes mistakes can be made. But not through his piloting, he's flawless. It's just just through his um, eagerness and, and perhaps cockiness, let's say. Um, and Gordon is, is in is in the middle of that. You know, he's he's got these moments where um, he's clumsy and. Especially when interacting with uh, Lady Penelope, yes. there's, there's some funny, very funny moments with uh, with Gordon. So he's, but each each one, and I think you said it best. They've definitely got their own personalities. Have we kind of answered what, yeah. what you were looking yeah. for here? Okay. Now the show has this great mix of like the the high action and then like the humor, like with the grandma's cooking and everything else that's going on. It's like a flip. <laughs> yes. So, do you have like a preference for like what's more? Uh, what's what do you enjoy more to do like when it's like those serious like action type you of stuff or? yeah I mean the the frisson when when we first got to say Thunderbirds are go that was and that was in, so that was insane that I was, remember that was, I remember seeing his face right after he got to do it for the first time <coughs> and 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 you just sort of you sort of did it and you, you, you just kind of did I can't believe I've done that. <laughs> and e even still, like, I, you know, yeah, we all get to say it, and it's it's just a, it's a blessing. And it's we love yeah. to we love to joke around, um, especially in the sessions. Uh, it's it's one of the best working environments ever. But but because our head writer Rob gets to sit in um, by a Skype. Poor guy gets has to get up at well, I guess four or five a.m. in order to come and sit in. Um, because of that, he started. Um, in, we have a very very short amount of time in these episodes, but still he's able to bring that levity in because of course it it's such a good counterpoint to the very very serious stuff. And um, all the best all the best shows in history have that. You can't just have you can't have one without the other. No. And um, but but that's the thing we. Um, 
we never feel like we are that we're lacking lacking the ability to say something or or, or to push something. You always feel satisfied that you have both the serious stuff and the and the, the very very humorous stuff. And you can see it with with Gordon and Alan as well. As soon as they might be joking around and, and being uh, childish, but as soon as they deal with the rescue themselves, they go into full on uh, professional. professional mode, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's the thing. I think that's the moral of the story. You, yeah. you get to have a great time as long as the work gets done, which is what we do in the studio. We do, we do have a lot of fun. We do. Probably too much fun in the studio. Um, we might get sued if anyone got those Found their, Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, now, wow. when you're improv does any of that make it into the actual episode? Tastes like, like a fight. fight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we just found out that that yeah, did it. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, Look forward to that. Yeah. Um, like there's a, there's a, there's a few things we because if, if we sit there we, we keep on stumbling over a word um, usually that's because you know I'm uh, I'm doing a bad job of something but but Rob will go well how or Dave our director would say well how would you say how do you think Virgil would say well I would try that and then that and suddenly you get to be part of the creative process of that and then it, it becomes automatic you instantly just change it on the fly and, and 99 percent of the time it's it's fine. It's fine. Um, you had a, um, a guest appearance by Sylvia Anderson, and we lost Sylvia Anderson yes. this week. Yes. Can I ask you um, whether you met her, what your memories of her was, and, and what what impact as a production it had having a, a kind of a, a, a... And there are some other... You know, Peter Dinley's voice is still there, yeah. counting in the yes. end of as I go, but... Yeah. To have and that, that is a beautiful yeah. Easter egg, isn't that, it? That, to have a, that, and I, I will say, that, is, that absolutely had to happen. If that was different, then it would not have been the same it would not have garnered the interest of, of the original fans let's say because this is a show for kids and for fresh eyes let's say not just for kids for fresh eyes but to have that is just it, that's your history right there you don't need anything else that's your history five four you know it's it's incredible um, but yeah Sylvia Anderson well meeting her was again an honour and uh, it was a privilege we did all work with her in, in the studio um, that unless somebody's filming something else we always are all in the studio every single one of us um, very rarely are we not um, again unless it's a scheduling thing so it was yeah that was that was um, that was great and Lady Penelope and, and co-creator of the whole yeah. and it was it was in a sense I mean it's, it sounds so cheesy to say it but it was a handing over the baton and it was a stamp of approval and um, and we've got David Graham and, and he's man. just a the he's nicest. the sharpest guy in the room oh yeah sharpest guy no and so so just turned 91. He hasn't lost a step. He's very talented. Um, and just one of the sweetest people. The funniest people as well. Oh, the puns, man. For the sass. The puns, yeah. <laughs> Oi. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I can just hands down say it's, it's one of the best jobs in the world. I mean, I, I mean, we're, we're lucky anyway, the stuff that we get to do. But this job is... Is special, very special, and um, and uh, you don't know until unless you. It's hard to explain, but uh, I know there are a lot of really die-hard fans um, that will get it. You know, yeah. that will get how much we love doing this this show. Uh, and it, th it's in the writing, it's all in the writing. It is. It's, the scripts are brilliant. Um, so look forward and to And most of the performances are brilliant too. <laughs> Not yours. Wow. Harsh. Bye. <laughs> Thunderbirds are go. Away. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> Thunderbirds are jet lag. <laughs> yeah, we really are. 25 hours and then what felt like a nap. And yeah. then uh, we started this morning. And uh, we were on live television, <laughs> which is uh, always a gamble, especially when people can't make actual syllabus. <laughs> but, uh, Good for actors. Huh? Yeah.